So we're not live yet, Cheryl. Um, stupid. I don't want to. Um, when you come back, just say we had some technical. Di I don't know if you want to see if we have some technical difficulties getting going this, tonight. Um, so we're here. I'm just trying to get my. Other monitoring stuff here. Yeah. Okay. And oh, we're not going to Facebook tonight. Oh, we're not? Nope. Oh. Okay. Now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. My hub online. This is studio talk, talk, the studio talk tonight. <laughs> I hope you've had a great week and I'm so glad you're here to join us. I'm Cheryl Duick, your host. And today we are going to be having a virtual studio experience uh, talking about music arrangement. I'll introduce our guest in a little bit. But of course, my wonderful co-host Daryl Duick is going to be with us tonight as it is studio talk. Daryl, did you want to pop in to say hi? Uh, sure, I will. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I popped in. Back to you. <laughs> Talk about a man with very few words. Anyway, <laughs> we just want to welcome you again. Actually, to GMI you know what? Hub. I'm looking at the microphone that's hanging from your head and being on the tech side. I'm going, oh, that's just annoying me right now. So there we <laughs> okay. go. Thank you. <laughs> it's been one of those days, one of those nights. So we're just going to have some fun and, and, and enjoy making music today. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, what better show to have technical issues than on Tech Talk, where we can actually talk about how we're fixing them. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, um, so glad that you're here to watch us uh, right now. If this is your first time checking out GMI Hub, what, first of all, welcome again. And feel free to go check out all the videos that are here on our YouTube channel. Um, there are over 130 of them that are there. And I want you to click your like and subscribe and, and 
hit that notification bell because every time we come online we have a new discussion that may be of interest to you so please click that and again click the subscribe button and click that bell, notification bell so you are one of the first people to know when we are going to be back here online with some pertinent information that may be helping you in your music career or in the music industry we also have a website gmihub.ca and that is where you're going to find out a lot about what GMI Hub is all about. We are here wanting to support and wanting to help build and support the, the music industry as best as we know how, especially for the gospel slash Christian music scene. So please feel free to go and check us out there. And you do have the opportunity to join us, be a part of the community on, on our GMI Hub, be on our mailing list so that we can communicate with you some of the things uh, that we're doing as well. As you uh, celebrate with you anytime you uh, release new music or anytime you have a new event. So definitely communicate with us and we want to communicate with you. Be a part of our community by going to our gmihub.ca website and signing up just to be a part. Um, we have a hub happenings. Um, we do have events coming up like an artist showcase that's coming up on May the 29th. And that's an opportunity where we love to showcase artists that maybe new or emerging that has new music and we just want to give you an opportunity to share that music so please feel free to go up to our website and check that out we also are doing a Christmas compilation project again you'll find that on our website and all that means is if you're a songwriter and you want to write a Christmas song we would love to receive that and work alongside you to help release that song so definitely again go to gmihub.ca check that out and see how we can work together to help you become more successful in your music career we are also on social media so feel free to follow us on on uh, Facebook and on Instagram we're at GMI hub we're also on Twitter which is at industry gospel we're on TikTok at GMI hub so feel free to follow us on any of those social medias again we'd love to hear from you with your comments and 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 your feedback because what you share with us helps us serve you a whole lot better so all that to simply say welcome and we'd love to not just have you for today but have you for a long period of time now, Daryl, let's bring you back out. <laughs> Here I am, still looking at that microphone so, in the shot. I still have the microphone in my shot. Okay, it, it's yes. wanting to anoint me right now. It just wants to... Yes, yes, just, it is. It, so, uh, I'll come to me while you adjust the microphone. Okay. What a day, what a day. For some reason, we're streaming on Facebook and not YouTube. Versus oh. you, we normally get on YouTube and not Facebook. But it is just one of those days. When you're trying to be techie and artistry all at once, I always find you're always having problems. So, but yes. Oh, Cheryl's back with us. Here we go. No, Is that better? Not. That microphone's in the shot. I'm going to give this back to you and you can introduce Anthony. Okay. How about that? <laughs> I'll just hold the mic. I'll just hold the mic up here. <laughs> it just wants to keep falling. I don't know why. Anyway. Well, our special guest tonight is Anthony Payano of Exodus uh, Studio Productions. Anthony um, actually has been with us before. It's been a while, though. Um, we've had him, I think, before we went online, actually. We had him as, as with us. And what's unique with Anthony is, is not only is he a producer, but he also is an instrumentalist that plays him and his wife play on cruise ships and so forth. So I think that's kind of cool that they have that experience. But today we're talking to the producer side of Anthony. So Anthony, come on out, say hello to everybody. And let's start our virtual, there's my virtual studio experience right there. Hey, Anthony. Oh, we need you to unmute your microphone to phone. say hi. Oh, okay. Can, am I, can you hear me? Yes, yes. you can. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Well, we're so glad to have you with us. Now, Anthony, I'm treating this as my virtual experience. Now, um, we've kind of, now this episode is kind of a continuation or kind of a, yeah, I guess, a, of one we started about last month, right, Daryl, where we introduced a Christmas yes. song. Yes. And we've been trying to figure out how to expand on this. Now, we, we got as far as talking about the lyrics 
and um, thinking about tempo and all that but now we want to get to the actual music arrangement and that's why Anthony is here with us tonight so Anthony you got a sample of our song and mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to find out what your thoughts were when you hear that is there a particular was there a particular <coughs> Uh, style of music that you heard or a particular set of instruments that you heard like what goes through the process what do you go through and when someone like myself comes with a with a hi I've got a song what can you do for me <laughs> the message well um, every every song that I work on um, there are a few different ways of, of uh, working out an arrangement so it depends a lot on what the artist is uh, providing right so in other words if they if they're a musician in a sense they, they sing but they also play an instrument that is also quite helpful because then they can also provide a, um, a chord progression that goes with their melody um, so they might play a little bit of piano uh, guitar basic but enough to to complement their melody all right but there are many cases where a songwriter slash singer is just a they just sing they don't have the experience of playing an instrument so there are different approaches um, a lot of times when a when a singer will come to the studio um, to start the process, I always uh, ask them to provide me references, uh, song references of other songs, other artists that they listen to, because that will enable me to, to go into the direction that they want me to go. Because as an arranger in music, in music production, there are so many ways of producing the same song. There's, you know, depending on the genre, depending on the instrumentation. Uh, so there are so many, so many angles to take. So it's best that the, the songwriter has a, a good idea of the direction they want the song to go into. Um, because I, as, I, as I mentioned, I, I, when you arrange a song, it can, it can go into so many different you know different genres is it going to be jazzy is it going to be pop is it going to be rock uh, so that has to be established at the beginning of the process and um, I always ask the songwriter to try to establish that at the beginning because I don't especially if they're a new client per se uh, I'm just starting to work with them I don't know the kind of music they like I don't know what kind of music they're influenced by so it, it, to me, it, it helps to for them to provide me uh, uh, a good perspective on you know the kind of sound that they're after. And, you know, if it's going to be you know classical, classical based, um, uh, and also the type of instrumentation. Are we going to use uh, acoustic based instruments like real drums, real bass? Uh, um, acoustic um, an acoustic type of instrumentation versus are we going to use electronic based instruments you know so that as well does play out in the process so I always try to establish that at the beginning you know and, and when we get when I get together with a, a songwriter we work out the the key that they're gonna sing the song in the tempo um that you know i'll i'll put down a a, a beat something that they can uh, sing to then i'll get them to actually record their song and uh have them so basically um i'm after the sketch the and, and the format you know they'll also a lot of times they will provide me a um a lyric sheet. Uh, I'll show you what a lot of a lot of people provide me with. I'll give you a. Let me see. A share this uh, uh, sh screen share. Screen share. How do I get the screen share here? Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. 
<sighs> okay, so can you see that? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, for instance, this this is a, a typical song that a songwriter provided me with. You know, they've already established the tempo. They already, um, well, they already, they'll tell me the key. Uh, and as you can see, there is the, they have all the lyrics, and they went ahead and put the chords uh, on top of the lyric, right? Now, not everybody will provide me that, all right? This is somebody who plays a little bit of guitar. And for me, that's quite helpful because it really, it starts the process. Although, when, when I go through the arranging process, I'll begin to uh, reharmonize. So in other words, I'll use different chord structures, different harmonies. And that would also depend on the genre that they've chosen to, to go into. All right. So, yeah, so that's just a, you know, a, a little lyric, a lyric sheet. They, a lot of times when they don't have, when they don't provide me a core chart, it would just be a lyrics. And I always ask them to provide me the lyrics in, space it out, double space it so that I can actually go in there and write the chords in. Also, because I write music, I'll also use manuscript paper to to jot down some of my um, melodic lines that I need to utilize in, in the process, right? Okay. So okay. that's that. Okay. So that sort of gives me, that's sort of the, the starting point. Okay. So in before, our case... Before, we... sorry, before I actually get into the actual musical part of the arranging process these are some of the things that I try to establish at the beginning so there I don't want the songwriter to be surprised so in other words they have a, a certain idea that they want in their minds maybe they can't totally communicate it but by providing some references that gives us a sort of a better idea of the direction to to go into okay so, so in our case, we sent, we have just a vocal track of vocals. There was no background. Um, I think the key, we might have provided a key. <laughs> I mean, not, not so much all the chords, but they did provide a key, <laughs> I think. Um, and what else did we provide? Um, I think we provided some of the lyrics, not, a, not, yeah, not an entire song. And a and tempo. tempo. Yeah, so, yeah, so you provided a tempo at 130.5. You provided oh. a, uh, a melodic line. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the, you provided a starting note. The, the, okay. key, the key, I usually figure out the key that we're in. In this case, it's the key of C that, we're, right. that we got the chart in, right? So in, in your case, you actually sent me your melody. Right, okay. where yes. in many cases the the client is coming to the studio, and I'll get them to record their their vocal. It's it just okay. a it's just like I call it a ghost track. It's just just for the sake of of so I have a guide. So they're right. gonna sing that song um, to a click to a tempo or maybe a beat just to keep them in sync and because we still don't have a harmonic progression like chords and all that I'll while they're singing I know the key so I'll just kind of play the, the the piano just to keep them in in pitch right just enough to get them from beginning to end okay so I'm just curious I have an idea of what I think the chord progression would be, but when you listened to it, did you have a chance to even think about chord progression, or is that something you would want me to disclose to you as well, an artist? It, uh, yeah, as an artist, it depends on the experience that you are providing, that, that you're presenting, right? In other okay. words, if you um have for instance let's just say that you want to put this song into a sort of con a country genre 
right? Okay. So within the country genre, um, there are certain type of chords that would be utilized. There's a progression that you utilize. Uh, you know, there's certain aspects of okay, wh where what kind of a um, what type of chords would I use? Uh, it would be uh, um, it wouldn't be jazz chords because it's a country tune, so you you kind of stay away from that. Now, however, if you are you are presenting this song, and you were saying, you know, I want this song to be to have some jazzy elements, then the chords are going to be um, based on that genre, and also the progression will also play out so there there are things that 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 you would that you would venture into depending on the genre that they have chosen so you as a songwriter you have you you're the one who's going to be dictating the direction of the song so the more information you can provide the better the outcome you know, there, okay. there have been a lot of situations where the songwriter it joins up with a an arranger, music producer, and then you know they come back to listen to the song, and it doesn't meet their expectations, because the producer took the song into a certain direction, and the songwriter um, didn't want that, so right. it it becomes it becomes a, a communication thing that has to be. Um, Presented at the beginning has to be set up so that they're we they the, the you know the arranger the 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 songwriter we're sort of on the same page and it's difficult especially at the beginning because if you haven't worked with this uh, um, songwriter you don't really know the kind of music that they're into right, right. so you have to sort of try to um, try to um, you know. Go into their mind, see, okay, what what is it that you want? You know, what, what direction are we taking? That's very important because, like I said, the, that that melody that you provided, there are so many different variations that we can uh, attach to it. Right, and that's and that's what's really interesting because you use the example of country versus jazz, and can I jump even in for a second, sure. Because we we're talking about communication. Hey, Anthony, I would love to see your face as you're talking to us. I, I know we've talked about the sheet music a wee bit. You can't see me? No, Not at all. Your, uh, your screen on. Oh, I thought I. Okay, sorry. I thought I removed it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. It's doing studio talk. This is. Okay, you, you know, didn't. You didn't. Met, you, no, no one said anything. So sorry. I'm new. I'm new to the platform, right? <laughs> This is so good because you, I, I didn't want to interrupt you because you're hitting some really good s topics and points there. Um, I was just going to ask, I know Cheryl's going to do something, but can you give me a, a, what a sound of a jazz progression would be versus a country progression would be? Okay, do you want me to sort of play it out um, in conjunction with um, the melody that uh, Cheryl has provided? Sure. Or do you want me? Or do you want me to just to play something, just randomly to show you the difference? Actually, if you can do it to the progress to this, the what we provided, that would be kind of cool, because it kind of gives a perspective of, like you said before, we provided a melody, but there's so many different ways that melody can go in terms of music arrangement. So that would be awesome if you could do that. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll play, um, church. Band. You can hear, can you hear that and the click? I did. Okay, so um, obviously I need to keep the click in there so that I can, um, so that way we can keep, keep, um, so I know exactly where to change the chords, right? And you can hear the piano okay? Yes. Okay. Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air Cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air 
is Christmas is calling. Christmas is calling. Anyway, sort of. That's sort of the idea. I mean, I'm just kind Without. of imper. I'm basically improvising, so you know. Right. Until, so what I'll do is I'll sit with that melody and I'll continually work with it uh, to to solidify the. Um, the chord structure, right? So right now, right. right there, I was just improvising. I was just throwing things out, just to see, okay, you know, how does that fit with uh, with your melody? So something, so was for that, instance, something. Hmm, so go ahead. That was more. Was that more the jazz feel? Yeah. Let me let me try that again. Hold on. Church bells ring every. Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling. Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling. All right, so that that's cool. using a very sort of jazzy approach. I mean, there's like I said, we, even within that, there are so many different uh, variations. So now, if I wanted to keep it a bit more, let's say, poppy, mainstream, then I would sort of take this approach, right? Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling. Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling. Right, so that see that's a bit more not as jazzy, right? Mm -hmm. Now if I wanted to do more of a sort of country thing, I'd be sort of. A, mm -hmm. be. Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling, church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling. Right. So there's a um, a bit more of a. So you can see there's so many so many um, uh, ways of approaching the same tune. So a lot of it has to do with okay, what are what are my what does the client want? What kind of what are they after? Right. So providing references to me is the uh, key f for them to really point me into the direction that they want to go into, right? Right. Thanks for doing that. And see, and I wanted you to do that specifically because it's very easy as a songwriter to have a song in their head, have a song in our head, have a way of thinking how it goes and almost assuming the producer should hear it, right, kind of idea. So I love the fact that you demonstrated that there are so many different ways, like just, you just demonstrated three different ways that uh, the background music could go. And I'm sure as an artist, um, like for myself, I went, wow, I didn't know those chords could actually go with that. That's kind of cool, right? So, yeah. And, yeah, and so, awesome. and, and like every, there are also different approaches that people take uh, in order to accomplish the same thing. My approach right. is always being, being a piano player. Um, and to me, that makes the most sense because I always start with the, the chords. Right. right. The melody is not mine because they're providing the melody, 
right? And sometimes they'll provide you the chords as well, right? But uh, in most cases, you know, the, the singer doesn't really play an instrument, so they'll they'll come come to the studio. Here's your here's my melody, and so I'll listen to it and I'll get a general idea of um, you know sort of progression. What what chords are going to fit underneath that melody, right? And like I said, there are so many combinations, right? So. It helps when they um, can give me a bit more direction in terms of where do you want to go with the song, right? Right. Yeah. That is so cool. Okay. So, so from what you said, um, in terms of what you heard, what you hear, you don't necessarily, you as a producer, don't necessarily say, let's change the chords, let's change the melody or let's change the tempo you wait for the artist to provide that for you but have you ever had a situation where you where the artist does provide something like say uh, i mean i wasn't thinking this but let's just say for fun i you know the song's presented and it's like we want to do a rock it we want to have a rock beat to it right we want it to be rocking and and you may listen to it and go but i kind of hear kind of would probably feel a little better if it was more jazzy. Like, have you ever had that kind of situation? Or do you just typically go, well, if you want rock, it's rock, and that's how we do it. How does how does how how do you handle things like that? Yeah, so it depends. Like I said, every songwriter has a different uh, approach to what they want, how demanding they are, how specific they want things. Uh, a lot of times they will trust me to say, hey, you know, your song, just from what I'm hearing, could probably work better in this genre, uh, opposed to what you're considering, or, um, you know, I always make suggestions to where I think will suit the, the melody, because remember, at the end of the day, it's always about the melody, it's the song, right, right? and the melody, the lyrics, uh, they all play out in how the the final song will take how how it will take shape, right? So, um, so I will always make suggestions. At the end of the day, you know, they're the ones. Um, it's their song, right? And uh, right. I'm just help. I'm here to facilitate the uh, the birthing process. <laughs> Right yes. <laughs> to, to bring this thing into manifestation from their thoughts, their their creativity, and we're trying to combine both. You know, their creativity, my creativity, their skill set, my skill set, and we're trying to put it all together so that uh, the the final outcome will be positive, and they'll be happy with the. The final song because at the end of the day once the song has been created they have to sing it now right because right. whatever they did whatever they did in the studio to start the process was just a just a ghost track was just a guide uh -huh. right so they had no music to work with all they had was uh, a tempo and me kind of fiddling around with the piano trying to keep keep them in in pitch um, then once the song has been created now they have to take that song take it home practice it before they come back to the studio so they you know they want to you want to make sure that they're happy because with that they're going to have to record that song now they're going to have to put emotion into it that it has to become it's a performance really in the studio to bring that right. song to another to another another level right okay so let's just say, um, let's just say for fun that we go with the jazz feel for this, just for fun. Hmm. Um, what instrumentation would we begin with? Or you actually, you want the chords first, right? Is that right? Yeah, that would be the you start. Want... In my, that's my approach. I always, uh, that's my starting point. I always start with, because I need, you need to have a, a foundation to build from. Right, okay. and usually having having a the harmonic progression uh, uh -huh. is uh, is is important to have, right? Especially in, okay, especially in a genre like jazz, for instance, right? Right. 
Okay. Or it's a, it's, I don't know if jazz is the right term, but I was thinking happy song. It's like a happy, it's Christmas. So I think of jazz. Uh, I don't know. Daryl would probably thinking. pop in and say something else. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd think a, a jazz pop, big band, swing, you know. I, I I love horns. Like, I hear horns ripping on that. Like, it, it's to me, I hear that song, and it can literally go a million different ways. Um, I'll say this. I always think, I think differently than you. I always, because I grew up playing horns and also drums, I will always start on the drum. Because that, to me, gives the energy and the feel, and also the timing. Um, I'm going to do this because I'm going to play something, and it will have a whole different feel. And it's not the speed that you had. Um, just because we can, and I took a little bit of time. I don't. I'm not a guy who works in the studio, so I downloaded a free software program. I spent about an hour and a half putting it together with the two drum kits that they gave us. So this is not the sound of a drum kit I would choose at all, but I think we're just going to do this because it is fun. I just want to make sure I'm not going to blast our ears off. Oh, wait, one's open here. Oh, there's it's not going to play. I need to do that. There we go. Let's try this. Everybody singing Christmas carols in Whatever key they hear it in, hopes are high, Lows in the air. I just figured I was going to have some fun and put like a little, doesn't allow me to shuffle or swing like a purdy shuffle, but it's like just one of those just, it was a whole different feel than what most people think, you know, the joy happy is like, what would happen if you would put a real slow... Not melancholy, but a slow little shuffle underneath of it. So that's one of the thoughts I came up with. But I kind of like the horns and all that other stuff too. I like the high energy. Right. That's so why I, we so, do the one thirty. Yeah. So um, as you can see, there are there are so many different uh, ways of approaching uh, a composition, right? And. Uh, so the, it becomes a question of, okay, which direction are we going to go into? And that's, that's uh, foundational. It's, uh, right. there, are so, like I said, there are so many avenues, and uh, the, the songwriter has to be in the know of what direction they're going to go into. I know a lot of songwriters, they're inspired, you know, they come up with a lyric, a melody, and they think, oh, this would be good in, in a song. But, I, you know, I've had so many songwriters, they come to the studio with this melody, and the melody is not even, it doesn't fit a typical, conventional song format. In other words, the verse... The chorus, the bridge, it's almost it's almost like they wrote it from a poetic um, a, a poetic uh, uh, perspective rather than from a song's perspective where there's a there's a like a, a pattern, uh, there's a rhyming, there's all these pl things that play out. So they just took they were inspired and they came up with this stuff. But now they bring it to me, and I'm supposed to now package it and make it sound like it's a song. And, and so that becomes the, the I mean, I, I can help direct that approach, but sometimes that melody is so out of the, 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 uh, the format that you, it's hard to work with, and it, it almost becomes too much work to try to make it fit. So I say to them, you know, you need to create this based on either put a beat on, play a beat, find a beat, you know, doesn't matter what it is, and then sing your song to that beat so that it fits within within a format, right? So that then it, it's, in other words, it becomes workable. Right. So a lot of singers they get very, ex um, um, they 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 get very inspired, 
and they come up with this beautiful melody and lyric but it's still if you're a songwriter you have to keep that in mind that there is an element to the writing there's a there's a craftsmanship that goes with it and so that the bomb's trying to say is the emphasis here is on the songwriter to come up with a song that fits the the concept of a song if it's commercial um or you know there are certain rules that you have to follow as well in the writing process so it just makes my job in com in creating the the rest of the instrumentation uh, a lot easier and more concise and you know they'll be happy with what uh, I end up giving them right right okay so let's just say for fun that this particular song is going to have a jazz swing type of feel um, I'll use Daryl's suggestion of getting we want horns in there um, and in terms of chords uh, let's see I, the C major is probably what you've been hearing the C major a minor F and G F and G could be in those in there as well um, so I know I just threw a whole bunch of stuff at you <laughs> just right now hmm. but what would be the next step like would you need to what would you need to what what would you need based on that information or what would you do well, with that information well if you're throwing out chords out there like uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. C basically is a, a one six two five progression C mm -hmm. a minor D minor or F and G um, you can't just throw chords out and the chord <coughs> chords have to work with the melody <clears throat> okay right because if not there's gonna be a clash right. between the melody and the chords so you have to take um, the the melody as the basically it's gonna dictate the direction of the progression right mm -hmm. and uh, I mean you know as a songwriter you, you have you might have like the, the 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 chords that you mentioned which was right it's basically C A minor but those chords may not work with your let's try this let's just see because you know um, the, the songwriter might might have some ideas uh, based on some some they might have some theory some ideas right but let's just see how that'll work right church bells ring everybody singing christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high loves in the air because christmas is calling christmas is calling church bells ring everybody singing christmas Carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, loves in the air, cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling. Yeah, so in this particular example, the uh the one six the C A minor of G seems to work, right? Now uh -huh. you you wanna sorry, you wanna keep it um in you want to keep it exciting so you, you want to try you want to try different things so it doesn't sound so repetitive let's just say right okay. so you want to try different different uh, motifs and uh, different chords to to try to accommodate that melody I mean as right. it is it, it as it is it does work because the melody does fit the the chord structure but you know you want to keep it somewhat interesting by introducing uh, a different different a different progression or a, a sort of a a, um, a different um, call it reharmonization where you're you're taking let's say the, the C a minor F G but maybe you might replace one of those chords with a different chord just to make it more interesting right right okay so so let's give an example so what different chord did would you put in there out of curiosity 
Okay, so let's go back Assuming to Assuming Jack swing -ish. Yeah, let's go back to the, uh, the sketch here. Okay. So, for instance, we're going... Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air Cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling Church bells ring, everybody singing Christmas carols in whatever key they hear it in hopes are high, love's in the air Cause Christmas is calling, Christmas is calling See, so what I did is I, I buried it a bit. Like I said, this, when I'm working on a song, I've got my, I've got my, my lyric sheet. Mm -hmm. And um, I spend a lot of time trying to find the right chords. I mean, I'm just kind of improvising right now. You know, just whatever, whatever comes out right. And you're trying right. to make it fit within, within, the, uh, uh, within the melody. Because, you know, you're always working with the melody. Uh, right. So once once I once I get a good sense of the progression, the the the, the harmonic progression, as I showed you on the uh, uh, the the uh, lyric sheet with the chords, and I'll, I'll, I'll write in all the chords that I'm going to use for the verse, chorus, bridge, all that sort of thing. And then afterwards, I'll start building it. Now, I'll start adding other instruments, and uh, of course, that again dictates the style and what kind of right. instruments will we use you know should we use this instrument or should we use that and the singer songwriter maybe they really want the piano right they mm -hmm. really want that as being sort of the center point of the of the, of the song um it could be a ballad and you know or they want a guitar like a pick guard picking guitar picking you know because they they just like it right it's not right or wrong it just becomes a question of preference here right? and their and their preference is always going to be based on their influence on right. whatever they listen to whatever inspires them so that's usually the the default that they're going to say hey, you know I, I really like that instrument and I really want to use it in my song right and so you kind of work towards accommodating them by by utilizing uh that specific instrument right it's like I said, it's not right or wrong uh i'll make suggestions as well along the way to say hey you know we can try combination you know just to to make the song interesting right right okay daryl any tech questions to add this moment, I'm gonna say no. Let's just keep going through. I'm enjoying, as the tech guy, or on the tech side, I enjoy just sometimes sitting back and listening to how other people work through the, the actual program itself. Because now it's, as much as this is all about the technology, it's literally not the technology. It's about getting back to the basics. Forget the technology, it's songwriting 101. Right, so I'll let you continue on, and maybe we'll try and get some tech questions in a little bit, Cheryl. Well, if I can interject, uh, interject <laughs> yep, the the, tec the the technology and how the technology plays out in the creative part, right? Mm -hmm. um, part of what a um, lot of lot of music producers do today is they they rely a lot now on computer technology sample sample libraries um there's a there's a lot of technology that goes into the, the the process and so it's it's very very important that the person who's creating the music they really understand the technology mm. because um things happen and then you have to figure out quickly why isn't that working why am i not getting that sound why is that because if you if it takes too long to figure that out then it's the the create the creativity begins to suffer right 
it, the spontaneity of the, you know, hey, I'm in that, I'm in that place, right? And I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really moving into this direction. And all of a sudden, I run into a, a technical snag, which happens on a regular basis because we're dealing with so many moving parts, right? And right. so you have to be quick to troubleshoot and solve that technical side of things so that you can go on right um but once you know once you have your your setup in your studio and, and it doesn't move you know and you have everything in place then it becomes a, a question of just you know it, it works right and so you you use to use the technology to to create this piece of music that you're working on and uh in the process you know you, you will get ideas and, and you'll say oh this will work and that'll work and so then you call this instrument up and you call that and and, and you have to it has to be accessible quickly and you have to move as that moment of inspiration hits you have to move quickly on it or else it becomes like oh missed it right mm. so i mean that's where technology meets creativity the technology has to be um almost flawless in a sense right you really have to know how everything works so that when you're creating music you're you're able to do it quickly without any uh, effortlessly without any uh, snags let's just say but these things come up all of a sudden you know you were you were working on something the 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 night before and you moved something or you unplugged something right and now you're back into your studio and you're trying to do some music and you can't figure out why right and so my um, what I do is anytime something gets moved, I always put it back right after. Because <laughs> then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget, well, what did I do? I mean, it happens, right? But uh, ideally, you want to create certain habits, uh, discipline, and keeping, keeping your environment. Because this is a creative environment, right? And you have to keep it in check all the time, right? Right, right. Well, I think Daryl kind of experienced that today when he was trying to make his sample, and yeah. he'd find it, and then, well, you can tell the story, Daryl, but as I was hearing you getting frustrated with it. <laughs> well, when you find a sample, you save it. Where did it save to? Right? So there's mm -hmm. the whole keeping everything in order in certain spots and how you're saving it, and then you're trying to plan it back, and with the system here that we're doing to even get ready for tonight, oh, it's different than what I normally do, and studio talk is always different than the regular ones that we do. So it just right. goes from one level of, I don't want to say chaos, but one level of complicated to me now actually having to listen and talk and switch and everything else and then throwing back in oh i'm wanting to do a playback device and making sure that your playback device is working and coming through and then all of a sudden we find out i've completely forgot that cheryl had to change passwords on stuff so we didn't get that into the youtube so we're not on youtube at the moment but we are on facebook <laughs> so and and we're trying to be creative in all of this and yeah. that's where I love what Anthony you're saying. Yeah, you're wanting to keep everything consistent, even if it's a little bit weird. It's like no, it's consistency. We've got it working like mm -hmm. this all the time. So, yeah, your yes. work, uh, your workspace is so critical, right? And everybody who functions in this environment that does what I do, let's just say composers, uh, uh, music producers, your workspace is has to be consistent you have to be in, in touch with it you have to be because we're always evolving in the sense we're adding new sounds we're adding new yeah. software we're adding all these new elements and every time you add something new sometimes you know 
it doesn't work the way you thought it was going to work. So now you, you're spending hours in the technical domain to try to fix the thing. So ideally, you want to do the technicalities when you're not working on a piece of music per se, right? You want to get all that sort of flushed out, working, it's all in sync, and then you move over, you move into the, uh, the creative side, and hopefully uh, you wouldn't have to contend with the technicalities. So it, 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 when you're getting back to the songwriter, there are many songwriters that not only are they songwriters and singers, but they're also their own music producer, uh, composer, and they're very techy, right? So some people can wear a number of hats, right? But not everybody can, right? Not every songwriter is capable of achieving that type of, it's just not their skill set. They don't want the skill set. Um, they try to do the skill set, but it just, it just gets, they always get, they always run into a snag. So it's best they do what they're doing, which is write beautiful songs, um, lyrically and melodically, and then they work with someone who does the, um, the 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 technical aspect, meaning the music, the creation of of the song, right? Absolutely, and you're right. There are artists that that we're aware of that actually write the music. They're the songwriters, but they're also the person that does the technical side. So, mm -hmm. I, I am curious. Like, are you aware of? I know you you have a more because you're a professional. You probably have a more higher scaled system that you would use. Uh, to help arrange music, but are there other systems that you would recommend, say, a new or an emerging artist that if they wanted to kind of tinker with arrangements to at least get those, uh, I want to say demo tracks, but something that, that they can at least bring to you as a producer, is there any particular software that you would suggest for them? Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of, there's even free softwares out there. Um, there's one called Cakewalk, which is a free free download. Um, there are other programs called Band in the Box. Um, but even even with then these are these are like um, I wouldn't say like high end pro programs. They're mm -hmm. they're they're good enough to put your ideas down sketch out your 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 song ideas although these are still considered um, digital workstations which means you still need a computer you still need the software you you, um, you still need uh, things to plug in so that in itself gets technical again right, right. maybe a bit more simplistic than running a, a pro, pro system studio uh, software but it's still like the old days you know you just they had like simple they used to call it portal studios right you know? <laughs> oh, the, basically yeah, the, 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 the tape track with the little built-in mixer into it you plug your four it. microphones in and away you that's go it. and four track you know it's a four track they use the cassette uh, to achieve that and, and of course they got more advanced as they went along uh but it was a very simplistic thing you plug in your thing and plug your guitar in and and there you go right it's, it's all analog based it wasn't digital right um however i think i think they still make certain things that are somewhat compatible although they still they record on a hard drive you know they don't use tape anymore uh but it's also the idea behind it is simplistic, right? They, right? There's not so many things that you have to hit and, you know, it's more of a plug and play type of uh, operation. And I think that's what, if people are wanting to pursue something like this is what they should do. Or the sim more simplest thing is just record your voice, take your phone and, and record it. And that's it. Have I can it. Do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have that's have it last month, right? Yeah, and have it. Have it, it. Have it so that it's in. It's in. There's a click. Uh, it's in time. It's in key. And then you take that 
and then you present it to someone else who will bring it to another level, right? To me, that's the simplistic, uh, because if you're going to try to achieve uh, a pro sound and, 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 and bring it to a certain level, there's so many, there's so many steps along the way to get it to that point. And some people are, they're, they have a real passion that they, and they, they're okay with that. You know, they'll start with it. They'll get the computer, they'll get the software, they, the, the microphones, the heart, the, the preamps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and start building their studio, which is what we did many, many years ago when we started the studio. We, it was more of a, uh, my wife, she's a singer songwriter and we wanted to, you know, create an environment so that we could record her songs. It was mostly for our own purpose, right? But as we went, as we kept doing it, we found people were interested in getting stuff recorded. And, and so we just evolved from there, right? But I, I tend to be more of the technical person, right? My wife, you know, she tries to do the technical thing and she runs into snags and, you know, then I have to go there <laughs> and try to fix the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah anyway. That would probably be me. <laughs> but going back to what you were saying, where um, at a certain point, where do you stop thinking that you can actually do a commercial thing at home and actually go out and do it where you need to go to a studio? Because the amount of money, like I've got lots of gear, and uh, it still sometimes amazes me. By the time you buy a good microphone and a good preamp and a good, and at a certain point, you have to buy software. Like you can get away with stuff with your your free stuff, but you got to buy software and you got to buy your plugins and your instruments. You're looking at, and then you have to spend how many hours to pull off a a sound, which you could just walk into somebody like yourself and say maybe in eight out spending eight hours with you is probably equivalent to spending eighty hours at home trying to figure everything out, putting it together, and finding the sounds. And you've lost your creativity. That's one of the yeah, things exactly. that is always a big discussion. People say, so Daryl, you can record Cheryl's stuff. I'm going, I will probably have fun trying to do something, but at a certain, no, no. <laughs> uh, that's where you have, I, I go, give it to somebody who knows what they're doing and they can do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, like I said, there are people that are, that are, are driven, they're passionate, and many have succeeded in being able to do it all, right? And wear many hats and we are in a sense we are living in a in a time frame um, where the more hats you can wear as an artist the better off you are I mean if we go back decades let's just go back to the 70s when we didn't have all this technology where everything was real real drug real musicians you know what technology didn't start to creep in till it was like 80s you know early 80s uh, where MIDI was introduced drum machines etc 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 so back then musicians you know they they did if you were a, a performer a singer you did that then you became then you got involved with other musicians and then you got maybe signed and then you had a publicist and then you had so basically there were all these different departments that were part of the final outcome of the artist's uh, journey right because that's how it was you know it, it, everybody did it was very specific everybody did one thing but time has changed we've evolved and now um, it's the emphasis is a lot on the artist that they more of an independent approach right that they basically try to do as much as they can um, the technical aspect becomes a challenge so that's where they usually have to find somebody who can help them with it afterwards maybe they can start doing the marketing themselves you know they can plug into all the different social medias that are available in order to 
because it's not the same as it was where you know you get signed and then the record label does all that side of things right now it's all you because you can and the 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 platforms are there but it also requires a lot of work and a lot of dedication to to even go into that direction right but getting back to the technical side of things uh, it's still a real challenge for a lot of people although the the technology is a lot cheaper than it was uh, in order to be able to achieve a uh, pretty good sound, pretty good final product, but that too requires, you know, everybody can everybody can get a laptop with some software and and uh, they you know, they call themselves a producer, right? But there are so many, so many little, so many more things that play out in order to to get the um, final product to sound decent, right? Well, so lessons learned. <laughs> so lessons learned. If you are an artist and you're watching this program right now, we're talking about music arrangement in the studio. And basically what we're learning is that, you know, when we, as songwriters, it's very easy to come up with a melody or a song or like just kind of a basic sketch of what's going, uh, of what um, uh, a potential a song and when you bring it to a producer pretty much there is so many different ways and so many different angles that your song can go so it's very important to con to really tune in with your producer and what to help you with as well if you are a songwriter that wants to do the technical side yourself you want to be able to toy with a little bit of arrangement on your own Make sure you know your. Make sure you know the product that you're working with, so that, so that when that creativity comes, the knowledge, or the lack of knowledge of the technology, doesn't hinder you from getting that creativity going mm. out. You know, mm. and you know I'm learning quite a bit here, and you know I was kind of thinking, oh, we're just going to end up just going to plowing through this song, but really there are a lot of details to take care of when working with a song and we're really appreciating Anthony sharing his his thoughts and his ideas related to this um, uh, Anthony any other tips or ideas uh, that you would want to give artists that well I guess the two sets of artists the artists that are just creative they're songwriters and they just want to they want to be able to be prepared to come into the studio and I think you shared a little bit of what we needed to have in place to help a producer, and, and, and especially if they're coming to see you, right? Which one's what they need. And also for the artist that is a songwriter, but also wants to do their own producing, at least to get the sketch or a, a demo, uh, I, I say a demo type of arrangement to a producer so that it can be taken to another level. Mm. Do you have any other tips or any other advice or did you want to repeat? No, I, I think um, my advice to a, a, a singer songwriter or, or sometimes there, there are just singers, mm -hmm. right? Who don't sing. I mean, they sing, but they're, they're not, it's not their strength, right? They're, they're more of a songwriter. And so what they do is they write the song and then they get the song produced with another singer in mind that will, rep, that will present that song uh, properly, right? However, in both cases, I think it's valuable for a singer or sorry, a songwriter, either they're a singer or they're just a songwriter, is to learn how to play a, a, an instrument, a piano or a guitar. The, mm -hmm. And I'm talking about basic, right? I'm not talking about you have to be like, a, you know, proficient, super proficient at it, but just to have some fundamentals so that way when you're singing, when you're playing your song, you can, you know, you have some some tools to work with right so if you got a melody like in in our example you know your melody and then you know what what chords can i use right so for instance typically speaking if a singer a sorry songwriter is writing a song you know they usually start with a a melody but if they have an instrument 
like a guitar, a piano. It just gives them so much more to work with so that they can actually apply some basic chording that will go with their voice and we're talking just some basic chord they don't have to be uh, like a some virtuoso instrumentalist just some basic uh, piano um, uh, rudiment understand chords understand keys because every singer will sing a song in a different key so a knowing the the chords that go with different keys right mm -hmm. there's a little bit of uh, there is a little bit of training involved right because uh, it's it's theory, it's theory predominantly based so you have to know which chords go with which keys but once you have a, a an understanding of that it does help the sing the songwriter to become a lot more proficient uh, it's kind of like a, the analogy you know if you're a painter if you only have two colors to work with your painting is going to be very limited right but the more colors you have uh, then you you can express yourself a lot better and same idea with having a, a piano uh, a guitar a, a chordal a chording instrument which is accordion <laughs> piano accord you know guitar um, you know th these instruments are are, are are sort of fundamental in the sense that, that that you can create your chords you sing your melody write down your chord and just just to get the basis of it and then when you give it to uh, a composer somebody who produces the music will take that and use it as a uh, starting point and I think that's uh, very helpful for a singer. If a singer, if a songwriter wants to pursue the 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 art of songwriting long term, right? I mean, if it's just one of those things where you know you you know you you wrote a song or two and uh, that's basically it, right? Then you know learning how to play an instrument maybe not doesn't apply right because it's it does require a lot of work to be able to develop that skill set but if you're going to do it for long term you know you really want to move into this area of songwriting then you know learning how to play an instrument is uh very helpful okay so learn to play an instrument um and you know, if someone has the basic theory, like, I, I can play piano, but it's grade one piano, <laughs> pretty much, which means I know the theory, and I could probably find the chords on piano, so would you say that that's good to at least get started on, on at least presenting chords and so forth, or do you think they should well, be a little bit more proficient? Well, when you use the idea of grade one, two, three, four, five, whatever, you're, 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 you're utilizing the uh, sort of the the, the um, legit classical uh, idea right. of, of of playing an instrument, right? Um, I'm not even going. I'm not even talking that. I'm talking about just learning chords. You don't have okay. to be. You don't have to be like. You don't have to be into playing scales and stuff like that. I mean, all these things are, are good too because it also helps you to uh, so, um, facilitate the, the 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 approach as well. Because now, the more you have to work with, if your technique is good, then you're able to play chords better, right? All that sort of thing. But you're not really after that. You're after you just want to be able to find the harmony. To go with your melody, right? right? So the, the the grade one, two, three, four, five doesn't really apply in this particular illustration. Okay. We're just okay. talking chords, and yeah. Okay, okay. See, there are some people that I know that play by ear, and they may not know what chords they're playing, which is very interesting as well. So in a case like that, if they're able to say play a song, but they're they're playing their song. They know they're hitting keys, but they couldn't tell you what chords they're playing. And they present this to you. 
So that's another set of work for you as well, right? Because that means you're literally listening and having to figure out what the chords are. Yes? Right, but, but that, that usually doesn't take very long, right? So the, the idea of them, if they can't write it out because they don't know what the chord is, but they can play the, the, the chord to, to go with the melody, that's still okay because what they provide me would be a melody or a recording of them playing their song vocally and, and with, the, with whatever instrument they're using. And that's, right. that's still better... That's still better than just providing a melody with nothing. Right. 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 Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I hope that you've learned something from this. Again, you know, if you're just tuning in, you're watching GMI Hub Online. We have been talking about music arrangement in the studio. We had producer Anthony Piano from Exodus Studios Productions. Um, I think I said that right, Exo Studio Productions, um, who uh, has taken the time to actually share with us what is actually needed from a producer's perspective, what is actually needed to begin the music arrangement process. And um, literally, it, go, it boils down to how, how to, basically, is it a sketch? Is that the right word? How to have the, the sketch of your song ready? Is that, would that be the right way to say that? Uh, yeah, I think it's the preliminary... Um the basis of the, the components that are mm -hmm. required. Uh, it, like we talked earlier, references, yes. right? right? It's one component, one component, uh, uh, the tempo, the key, uh, um, those, those can be established once they get into the studio, but they should have a general idea of, is the song going to be a fast, slow, uh, ballad, right? Um, and like I said, the references are, are really important. The the type of instrumentation, you know, what are they what are they hearing? Are they hearing a lot of piano, a lot of guitar, a lot of uh, strings, drums, bass, uh, synthesizers? You know, what kind of sounds do they like to? What are they hearing? They like to implement and add to their their tune. So basically, having as much as they can provide. Um, so that the, the, the starting process uh, moves correctly into the f direction of creating something that they are going to be pleased with. Right. And then once you have those, those basics, those basic pillars, if you want to call it, that you have those basic elements to start the song, and then the next step would be actually building the arrangement. And when you build the arrangement, do you have a particular pattern of how you build the arrangement once you have all the elements? Yeah, so once I have a melody recorded, their mm -hmm. vocal, right? Then mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll I, have, I also have the, uh, uh, the lyric sheet that they provided, right? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they should also provide it in a in a way that it it does separate. Okay, this is the verse, this is the chorus, this is mm -hmm. second verse. There's the bridge. You know, those those are part of the the format, and they should have that already built into their song, so they know where where the song, what parts of the song are we working on. So once I have their 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 melody. Then what I'll do is I'll go into my, my, my program and I'll start separating the sections. So I have a visual of where the intro is, the verse, the chorus. So I have an actual visual on my, on my screen. Then I take, take the melody and start creating the harmonic progression, the chords. Uh -huh. right? So once I, have, once I have the chords, then what I'll do is I'll start now layering, start adding elements to it. I'll start, you know, uh, I'll look for a a beat, uh, or I'll, I'll create a beat, or I'll depending on if they want me to use like a real drum set versus electronic set, right? So all those things now get played out in the uh, uh, the creation of the parts, right? right. Are we going to use? Am I going to? So uh, in, on my system, my computer, I'll start loading in all my um, sound plugins, 
right? If, it's, if I'm using, you know, the, the bass, the guitar, the, 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 the. usually the guitar parts, for instance, my wife who plays guitar, I always get her to play guitar on the track because it just adds more of that live element if the arrangement actually requires it, right? right. So once you start putting all those components together, then now you're starting to move from section to section. You know, you got your, you create an intro, then you start building it, and and it starts to take shape um, within, you know, beginning to end, and so, you know, that becomes now very creative to say, okay, I'm going to use this sound in that section, or sometimes you re end up removing things that you thought were working, but now you don't fi you find it doesn't really work, right? So, it's it's a it's a process, right? Of course, of course. What's the what are some of the last things that you do in a music arrangement? What what are some of the last things you would add? Just out of curiosity. Um. Like, what do you mean by add? Like, well, uh, I guess I guess I'm sort of thinking. Okay, as you were talking about how how a song takes shape, I'm thinking of it as almost like a well, two different analogies. One would be like a sculpture. You know, you have to have the certain elements in order to even create the the uh, the mold or the clay in order to shape the clay in order to make the vessel, and then you know, once you can make the vessel, then you add the heat, you know, you have the vessel made in shape, you have the heat to in order to keep the vessel in that shape. And then there's the added decoration, the painting, the shellacking or whatever. When it comes to music, you know, you were talking about those basic elements, the melody, the, um, the, the, the melody, the chords, uh, or the harmon, har, har Harmonies or harmonic? Oh, you said another word, Har but it, harmonies. Harmonic progression. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Harmonic progression. Yeah. <laughs> um, the harmonic progressions, um, and then you, you said once you have all of that together, then you start adding other elements like maybe the strings, the bass music, the the guitars, maybe certain piano, maybe certain things. But then that creates the I'll call it the meat or the body of the song and then there's the extra little decorations that add on to that in the in the clay uh, uh, analogy it would be the painting the shellacking and all that typically when adding the extras for the song what would be the extras would it be sound effects would it be um, the extra instrumentation that would normally not be, say, in the rhythm section. What's typically, just, I'm just curious of some of the elements that you probably would think of putting in a, in a song. In this particular example for, well, the song that we sent you, it's more of a Christmas-themed song. So what would be the extra elements, the extra sprinkles, if you want to call it, that you'd put on there? Well, if it's going to, you know, if it's going to take on a, a traditional sort of traditional Christmas song, then you're going to add, you know, certain sounds that reflect, you know, like sleigh bells, for instance, you know, which is very typical. But then do you really want to make it that obvious, right? So it becomes like mm. uh, preference as well, right? So um, you, you it, everybody, I think people who do what I do, there are many ways of achieving the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. There are different pathways. My pathway is I always build it, um, and I like to add things along the way to create contrast, right? So that things don't become basically copies. I try to avoid mm -hmm. that. I mean, in certain songs like hip hop and rap, you know, everything is a copy. It's just the style of the music. It's just a loop. Right, but when you get into more pop-based tunes, there are trends. There are there's contrast from the first verse is going to be will sound a little bit different than the second verse, right? So as you're building this, and then when you're finally you feel like okay, I think I've added enough because you can also overdo it, right? Um, you then <coughs> then you kind of listen listen to the tune and then you can start to 
take on that sort of more of a, an objective look and a, a listening to say, okay, you know, uh, I really don't need that. I can do without that. The other thing that does play out, which is to me is very important, as I'm when I've got like I might have I don't know 25, 30 tracks, right? I want to make sure that they're all mixed to a certain degree, not perfectly mixed because remember I still have to record the vocals. All I got is a uh, uh, just a ghost track. It's not the right vocal, right? But still. With all that, I'm going to create a mix because I need to be able to hear it uh, so that all the instruments are relative to each other. So now I can I can really say, okay, you know, I don't really need that or maybe I need more of that or I want to add this or take away that. So now it becomes a, uh, a process of elimination or add-ons, right, to say, you know, I think it's going to sound better if I add this, you know. So the... I, Creating a mix for me, anyway, is, is important because I can I get to hear things properly, how everything is sitting in in, in the spectrum. Right. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think I've learned quite a bit <laughs> today, um, Daryl. You've been sitting back and letting me do all the talking. Well, let Angie do all the talking. <laughs> But isn't that one of our jokes that we have? We're experts at not being experts, so we bring the experts in to tell us what to do and how to do that. Yes, of course. Of course. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting back and learning and listening. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I said, like I mentioned earlier, there are different ways of achieving um, the same thing, you know. Uh, but I think I would say that what my... Uh, approach. Um, there's probably very a lot of people that would use the same approach, right? Because you know, the getting getting the getting the chord progression is 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 fundamental. You need to have that, because especially if the singer songwriter hasn't provided you any of that, all you got is a melody. Well, now you have to sit down and chart out this song. You know, right. so that you have you have the harmony now, the harmonic progression to go with the melody. So I think that that would be fundamental, all right. Um, so yeah, so I think I think my what I what I presented, I think there's a lot of similarities between what someone else would do. Right. Right. Well, I think it would be interesting to compare or to share that with the, some of the other producers that we've had on air, just to see, because I think they, they, they would agree with you that they, they all need something basic to work with, but, and then basically they'd branch off with how they would approach it from there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, very, very interesting. So I, I, I'm just, I just want to process all of this information right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, 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 all I can say is, you know, Anthony, this has been a wealth of information. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and, you know, and sharing with us. And if people want to get in contact with you, uh, maybe with music, are you actually, are you sharing some music at all or, or not sharing music, but producing other songs at this point in time or? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm always working with different artists and uh, mm -hmm. working on their music. Sometimes songwriters or actually singers will also bring their songs already done. So okay. they're basically using the studio more from a, uh, they want to record their vocals. I have a lot of uh, uh, ethnic, the ethnic community that their music is being created, uh, for instance, uh, in India, right? They they have the producer, music producer that has already created the music, but they need uh, they need somewhere to record the vocals. So they'll come here, they'll bring their track um, and record their vocal, and then I'll send just the vocal to the music producer, and then they kind of finish off the the process. Or sometimes they'll 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 bring me the the music like the track 
and record their vocals and I'll mix it. Or sometimes they'll bring me what they call music stems, which is, which is better because now rather than bringing me a karaoke type of a mix, they'll bring me all the components like the bass, the drums, the guitar. So they're all separate. So now I can mix them properly, right? So I get those people as well. And then you got the ones who hire me to create the whole thing from scratch, right? Right. And so, so if they wanted to... Go ahead. Different, different clientele. So if they wanted to get in contact with you, what would be the best way to reach you? They can phone me. <laughs> or, email, <laughs> or, e or email me, right? Okay. And your email address is Anthony... I have it's Exodus. It and at Exodus Studio Productions. Exodus at ExodusStudio.ca. Ah, uh, Exodus at ExodusStudio.ca. So if you want to get a hold of Anthony Piano to work on any of your music, you send that email. We will put that email into uh, the description of, of this video. But again, Anthony, thank you so much for being with us and sharing your wealth of information. And thank you, audience, for watching us. Remember that if you want to learn more about uh, Anthony and all the other guests that we've had on our programs, definitely check us out on Facebook. You can check us out on YouTube, uh, Facebook at GMI Hub, uh, YouTube, GMI Hub Online, or just go straight to our website and go to uh, gmihub.ca where you can learn more about what GMI Hub is offering for all of you. Until next time, we want you to have a great week. There's a holiday coming up, so great holiday weekend, and we will see you next time on GMI Hub. Bye for now. Now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4.